usually the intention, the Japanese intention is for to kill all the the Chamorros and they have to take over the island. Lourdes Laguania Perez was 11 years old when the Japanese occupation of Guam began. Although she was young at the time, her memory burns with images of the suffering she endured with her family. Senora Perez says her family's strong faith, combined with the grace of God, is what kept them alive through the occupation. My father and my uh, first cousin were taken to a place where they have a hole. And so my father had uh, my uh, cousin's uh, uh, hand with him. And when they, the Japanese threw the hand grenade into the hole, my father grabbed my cousin and ran to the grass where the tall grasses are because the taller the grass are, the less the Japanese can find you. So they walked from, I think from Agania or Barigada to Finaguazo. And they went to Finaguazo with the, all these flare, flare uh, bullets. They were, and my, my father's sisters were, were praying and praying in the farm until my father and my cousin came. When the Marines finally arrived on Guam, the Japanese threat was far from over. The Chamorros were escorted by armed U.S. Marines from the Menengan camp. They marched across the rough terrain of Guam's mountains while Japanese soldiers lay waiting to ambush around every corner. In the mountain, just imagine up the hill. We walk in the hill up to Agat, and we, we, we have the Marines with us. Every five or ten Chamorros, Marine in there, Marine in there with their... And so the Japanese were hiding already because the Americans landed already. So the Japanese were hiding in, down in the ditch and the Americans were, were taking us. Senora Perez has since gone on to live a long life full of experiences. She has six children and 17 grandchildren whose existence are living proof of the strength of Perez's courage and faith.